Matthew, Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. And we're going to look at verses 18 and 19. We're not going to be, we're not going to be before you. We're not going to be, we're not going to be for you long. What? So fresh and simple. <laughs> Matthew chapter. Matthew chapter 16. Mount Calvary is the place, Lord. <laughs> Matthew chapter 16. We are going to look at verses 18 and 19. Real quick, real quick. King James Version. Matthew chapter 16, verses 18. Uh, 18 and, and 19. You got it? And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Watch this, Calvary. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever you should loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Look at your neighbor and say neighbor, neighbor. I've got the keys. I've got the keys. Amen. Amen. I've got the keys. I've got the keys. In the Greek islands, one can find the home of Hippocrates, who is considered to be the father of modern medicine. In the area of his home, one can also find an olive tree, dating, supposedly dating from the time of his life. It is said that this tree would probably be about 2,400 years old. The trunk of this tree is large, but now it's very hollow. The tree is little, is a little more than uh, thick bark. There are a few long straggling branches, but they are supported by wooden poles every so feet. It has an occasional leaf here and there, and might produce a few olives every year. But in the fields around this tree, olives have, are growing in every direction. The strong, healthy young trees with narrow trunks are covered with a thick canopy of leaves which masses, with masses of olives can be found every single year. Watch this. The tree of Hippocrates can still be called an olive tree by nature in that it still shows the essential unique characteristics of the tree. But it has long since ceased to fulfill any olive function. The tree could still be called an olive tree, but it has ceased to produce any olives for years. Tourists show up to inspect the ancient relic, having some link to a dim history. But watch this, the job of that tree passed long years ago to many successions of replanted trees. I wonder, do you know anybody, any churches, or perhaps even yourself? that are like the tree of Hippocrates. There is a form there, but there is no function there. <laughs> it looks 
the part, but it's not performing the part. The process is there, but the product is not. The form of godliness is there, but the people are ungodly. The people are there, but the praise is not. The sanctum is there, but the spirit is not. The tradition is there, but the transformative power of God is not. Many have stopped producing and are satisfied with just being present or simply having a noble history. It is, a good, it is good to study history, but God is looking for folk to make history. It is good to study history, but God is looking for us to make history. God is not looking for a people who are resting on the accomplishments of days gone by. God is looking for people who are trying to make a difference in the days that we are in right now. God is not looking for a people who is satisfied with what we have always done. God is looking for a people who are thinking about kingdom building. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God is looking for a church for a people that is bound and determined to bring people to the master. That should be our goal. That should be our objective. That should be the meaning, meaning of our ministries and the might of our message. There should be unity in our community. Deuteronomy 32 and 30 says, one can chase a thousand, but two have put 10,000 to flight. Psalms 133 and one, how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It's Romans 15 and 6. So that with one mind and one voice, you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen at me, Calvary. The enemy has been striving since the beginning of time to stop what God is doing. He knows the only way, Reverend Showers, that he can deter us is by creating division within us. He knows that the only way he can stand in our way is if he divides us because together we stand and divided. We fall house divided against itself shall not Stay. He knows that when the church is together, his kingdom must come crumbling down. He knows that when the church is together, lives are changed. He knows that when the church is together, lost folk come home. He knows when the church is together, drug addictions are broken. He knows when the church is together, generational curses are broken. He knows when the church gets together, mountains get moved. Valleys get exalted. Crooked places are made straight. He knows when the church gets together that no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. He knows when the church gets together that we are more than conquerors. He knows when the church gets together no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. That's why he attempts to interject 
confusion, backbiting, lying, hypocrisy, jealousy, deception, and despair. Watch this. He doesn't care about us liking people outside. He wants us not to like each other on the inside. Because if we don't like each other in here, how in the world are we going to help somebody out there? People come to church and leave church because they watch how church folk treat one another. I'm sorry. I'm not going to hell through the church. Not going to do it. If I'm going to go to hell, it's going to be for another reason. I'm not going to come here every Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. Hear God's word. Listen to God's word. Lift my hands. Tell God, thank you. Run around the building. Talk about the goodness of Jesus. And then go to hell because I don't like you. I'm not going to do it. Tell your neighbor, you ain't that important. I love you, but you're not that important to send me to hell because hell is too hot and eternity is too long. I'm not going to do it through the church. Wouldn't it be a horrible feeling to get there to the gate because everybody's going to get to the gate. Don't mean everybody's going to get in the gate. And I dare not get to the gate and hear him say to me, Reverend Daniels, depart from me, ye worker of iniquity, for I know you not. We are in this thing together. Don't go to hell through the church. Now don't leave here and say, do you listening? Don't go protect somebody and say, Pastor said everybody was going to hell. That ain't what I said. That never came out of my mouth. But the enemy's job is to sow division in every place in your life where you need unity. You ever notice that he even tries to sow division in your house? And we've got to tell him, no, God's been too good to us. Trying his best to bring destruction to God's but we come today to declare the devil, you are a liar. Mm -hmm. And we know that there is a great work ahead of us. Uh, and oftentimes one of our biggest detriments is the fact that we spend a lot of time looking back. The problem oftentimes occurs because we don't have enough focus on forward and we get stuck in backwards. It's good to look back, to celebrate the accomplishments of yesteryears, but we can't use all of our excitement in yesterday. Somebody has to get excited about today. Tell your neighbor, I'm excited about today. I'm excited about what's in front of me. And I believe that there's about 10 folk in here who are crazy enough just like me to stop looking at where you used to be and start looking at where you are and where you're about to be and give God some praise. There's somebody in here who believe God is about to bring you out. God is about to bring you through. God is about to pick you up and I, I dare you to give God an about to praise. 
See, I've, 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 my praise levels have evolved. I, I've, 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 I've moved from just the praise because he's done it praise. And I've graduated to being a he's about to do it praiser. <laughs> just being a praiser for what he's done. Yes, I still praise him for what he's done, but I've also graduated to a place that I can lift my hands and tell God thank you for what he's about to do. Somebody will tell your neighbor, I believe he's about to do something in my life. The fact that the Lord is there is enough for me to give him praise. Because if the Lord is present, I know he's about to lose his power. Oh, give your neighbor a high five and tell him he ain't done it for me yet, but I'm going to give him an about to praise. I believe he's about to lift me. He's about to heal me. He's about to bring me out. He's about to bless my children. He's about to give me a promotion. He's about to move those enemies out of my path. He's about to make a way out of no way. He's about to open a door, a crack, a window, tear down a wall. He's about to do whatever it is he needs to do to get Give me what he promised me. Oh, I wish I had about 15 causes in here that can just give God a five-second praise for what he's about to do. He's about. He has not done it for me yet, but he's about to. He hasn't brought me out yet, but he's about to. He hasn't made a way yet, but... He's about to. Look at somebody and tell him he's about to. And I feel better. So much better. He's about to. You asking me why I'm smiling? With the hell I'm going through? Because I believe he's about to bring me out. Oh, I wish somebody would just shout, he's about to. Hallelujah. Meet me at the text. We find in this pericope, Jesus asking the disciples three fundamental questions. First thing he says, first thing, first thing, the first thing, the first thing that he asks, first thing that he asks, he asks them, he says, who do, who do men say that uh, I am? We ask, really ask them two questions. Who do men say that I am? Who do men say that I am? That brings me to the first point. If I had to give you three points, theologically sound message, I would say to you, it don't matter what they say. <laughs> look at your neighbor say it don't matter what they say. Look, look at somebody and say it don't matter what they, what they say. I, I don't even know who they is. I ain't, I ain't met they. I ain't, I ain't called they. I, I don't have they number. I don't. I don't. He says. Jesus asked them, what's the word on the street? <laughs> Jesus was definitely talking to some folk that had been to church. He said, what's the word <laughs> on the street? I said, <laughs> what's the word on the street? What was the scuttlebutt going on in the community? What are people saying about me? I know they're talking, I know they're talking, I know they're talking, I know they're talking, I know they're talking about me, I know they're talking about me, and it really doesn't bother me that they're talking about me because I know that some folk are going to always talk about me, but, but what bothers me is they feel comfortable talking about me in front of you. 
Somebody missed that right there. Somebody, somebody missed that. Right there. Not, I don't really mind folk talking about me, but, but what bothers me is that sometimes when folk talking about me, they feel, to, feel comfortable talking about me and you. Because that says something, watch this, about them. And it also says something about you. Oh, there ought to be there ought to be some limitations, y'all. There, there ought to be some folks that you just don't let folk talk about or talk to you about. You 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 shut them off right there. there this is where the conversation stops. We're not gonna talk about my child. We're not gonna talk about my wife. We're not gonna talk about we're not gonna talk about my family. We're not gonna talk about my mama. We're not gonna talk about my brother, my son. This is where the conversation stops. about me you can't walk with me you got to check some of the folk that's on your team cuz some folk just wearing the same uniform they ain't really what Jesus say what they say and the Bible says daddy they Say it. Some say you John the Baptist. Some say you Elijah. Other folk believe you Jeremiah. Uh, one of them other prophet fellas. Watch this. Isn't it interesting that all the disciples knew what they said? They knew what everybody else was saying. I've asked the Lord, Lord, release me a folk who always know what they say. And put some folk around me who know what you say. I'm not concerned with the word on the street. Who shot John? Who going with who? Who was in the newspaper? What does the master say? And watch this, y'all. Jesus gives us a perfect response to what they say. What's the response? Say absolutely nothing Jesus didn't ask them who they was why they said that how long they been saying Jesus moved on to the second question he says but who do you say My chaplain at Fist, she gave me nuggets that I live with every day of my life. And one of the nuggets that she taught us, that she taught us, that she taught us, she taught us one day we were sitting at the bottom of the chapel. And I mean, it was a plethora of preachers. Preachers, one is in Houston now, I'm here. One is in New York, one is in, is in Georgia, one is in Chicago, all over this country, her preachers. And she looked at us and she said, whatever is said about you, is strictly hearsay until you give it validation. Jesus never validates what they say. So Father, he didn't even acknowledge it. He went to the more important question. Who do you say? I am. 
because you've walked with me. I want to know who you say I am because you've talked with me. I want to know who you say I am because you've eaten with me. I want to know who you say I am. And when you know him for yourself, when you tried him for yourself, when you ain't living on big mama's testimonies, when you ain't living on your mama's testimony, you can res respond just like Peter responded. Thou art the Christ the son of the living God. When you know him, it really doesn't matter what they say. You know he is the great I am. I don't know how you feel about it, but since I know him for myself, I don't need nobody telling me who he is. I don't need anybody telling me what he can do. I don't need anybody telling me about his power. I've tried him for myself, and I know who he is. He's way out of nowhere. He's my friend when I'm friendless. He's my scout in a time of storm. He's He's my hope for tomorrow. Is there anybody here who knows who he is? You tried him. And you know him. And you don't mind telling somebody. Oh, he is my all in all. Bless thou, Simon Barjona. You didn't get this by flesh and blood, but by my Father, which art in heaven. Upon this rock, I will build my church. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. Hell will rise, but it won't prevail. Confusion will show up, but it won't prevail. Disappointment will walk through the door, but it will not prevail. The enemy will raise his head, but I know there's been some praying going on. Uh oh, there are some members who know how to get before the Lord and tell the Lord, Lord, watch over my church. Put your hands of protection around my church. Lord, pick, put your blood, come on your church with your blood. There's been some praying and some fasting. And I know that the gates of hell won't prevail. How do I know? Because we are the church of the risen Savior. And he told me it's not going anywhere. Yeah. I'm going to give you uh, the keys of heaven. Yeah. What you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Yeah. And what you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, use the keys. If they didn't find like they act like they ain't have no keys, look at somebody else and tell them use the keys. I wish the church of God would use the keys. I wish the believers of Christ would use the keys. Tell your neighbor I've got the keys to every situation in my life. I've got the keys uh, to every problem that I face. Uh, I've got the keys uh, to every disappointment that comes my way. I've got the keys uh, to every problem that comes in my life. Uh, I've got my keys. Uh, and you may be wondering, uh, what is my keys? Uh, my keys uh, is my praise. Uh, because prayers, uh, praise unlocks the doors that stand in my way. Uh, praise opens up the windows of heaven uh, that blessings come falling down. Tell your neighbor, I got the keys uh, and I'm getting ready to use them uh, right now. Uh, every time uh, I think about uh, the goodness of the Lord, uh, something happens uh, on the inside of me. Uh, and before I know it, uh, my hand is in the air. Uh, say, Lord, uh, I bless your name. Uh, you did uh, so good to me. Uh, you brought me from a mighty long way. Uh, every time uh, I turn around, uh, Send me if you know the Lord's been blessing you. I dare you put your hands together, give God some praise. Tell the Lord.
thank you, sir, for picking me up. Thank you, sir, for turning me around. Thank you, sir, for watching my children. Now I'm getting ready to use my keys. Cause he told me where I lose down here will be loose up there. And when I bind down here, shall be bound up there. If you're not too mean, stand on your feet. Tell the Lord, I'm ready to lose some stuff in my life. I lose health and protection. I lose joy and happiness. I lose peace and understanding. Grab your neighbor, say neighbor, excuse me while I lose it. I lose freedom in my life. I lose protection of I lose, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything the devil held in his hands tried to keep me from getting I lose it right now. Tell your neighbor I'm getting ready to tell the devil Give me my stuff back, my joy back, my smile back, my happiness back, my freedom back. Look at me, I'm alright, cause I lose it. Yeah, yeah, lose it, lose it right now. Now, before we go. You got to use your keys. And you got to bound on earth.